We continue on our journey through Lent as we step inside the heartbreaking story of saying goodbye to friends. We put ourselves in the picture of Holy Week so that we might take a closer look and let the ancient story open us to listen to one another and to treasure each other, all equal and precious in the eyes of God. Into, into the story, into the place you belong, not just looking on, for this is your story, into the story. at the Last Supper were shocking to those in attendance. His words can seem familiar, even comforting to us, because we hear these words every time we have communion. But at the moment of their utterance, they were anything but usual. This week, we enter the scene of that Last Supper long enough to get a grasp of the shock that would have rippled through Jesus' friends. Partaking of body and blood, not kosher. A Lord washing feet like a servant, unbelievable. Breaking bread with the enemy, what? But Jesus knew his time was up, and it was time for the disciples to get the message, even if it came in a shocking way. Love one another as I have loved you, by serving, forgiving, freeing, communing, becoming one with God. Let us now join together in the prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Sometimes we just aren't paying attention. 
We can keep our heads in the sand when we really need to attend to difficult situations or the needs of your people. Forgive us, O God. Guard us from distancing ourselves too much and help us to care for what's right in front of us. You entered our story through Jesus. Now help us to enter fully into the story of your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. You can now join us as we sing our opening responsive hymn, Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. opportunities to be in humble service to friends and strangers. You are forgiven and freed, encouraged and loved by a God who wants you to live fully. Let us enter the passion of Christ and pass the peace of Christ with one another. So the peace of Christ be with you, those out in the internet and respond with and also with you. So greet, greet one another online if you're able to this morning. Our scripture is from John, chapter 13, verses 3 through 16. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, 
One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now we will enter into the story uh, read by Teresa Hayes. My master's banquet hall upstairs was booked for this night, and the time had arrived for this evening's group to come for the banquet. All was prepared according to their wishes, and I was ready with the water and basin as I always am. Years ago, my parents had given me to the owner as collateral for the debt that they owed him, but things did not go well for them and the debt had never been paid. And so I worked to pay it off. Roman law says that someday I could be a freed person, but I never again have the full rights in society like those who have never been slaves. It is a mark for life. I keep my head down and do what the master asks because legally he has the right to punish, abuse, and humiliate me. I've witnessed it happen to others. Right now, I have no rights. So, there I was with the bowl, just waiting for the go-ahead to start. It would be the honored guest first, of course, and I knew which one that was by where he was seated. This was all protocol. Everyone has a place according to status. When he showed up, I recognized him and remembered the stories I had been hearing about this teacher. He was saying things that were really upsetting those invested in the system of status, saying things like, the last shall be first. My friend, who serves in the kitchen, had to tell me to stop staring. I just couldn't imagine a world like he described. And then he came right up to me and took the basin of water from my hands. He took my servant's towel and wrapped it around his own waist and knelt, telling Peter to come sit down. This was going to be no ordinary night. And I realized my life, my view of myself, and my station in life was never going to be the same. So friends, I don't know about you, but I didn't know I was going to be giving up this much for Lent. I mean, think back to Ash Wednesday or even before Ash Wednesday when you were making plans about way, things that you could give up uh, so that you could come closer to God. And then look what happened. Things started shutting down and our lives became more and more uh, stripped of our daily lives and activities. And we our experiences loss, experiencing losses that we never even intended. So I want to hear what losses you have experienced. And uh, we're going to do this again. We tried this last Sunday, and it turned out really neat. If you could go to menti.com and use the code 820372, you can pull that up on your phone. You can make a new tab in your computer. 
um, on your browser and go to that page. And I want you to enter in uh, what are some losses that you have experienced with the COVID-19 guidelines? And here are some options here. Were your travel plans canceled? Were, was there an event or a celebration canceled? Uh, was employment terminated or put on hold? Was your retirement savings reduced? Or school buildings were closed and you can't go to school? Or how about spring sports put on hold for your activities? Uh, and then uh, other things that weren't listed there. So how these things are showing up here, what you have experienced. So we've got a lot of retirement reduced, events, celebrations canceled, um, we had planned to go to an OKC Thunder game, and uh, it was that week where they, right before tip-off, they uh, had decided to postpone the game, and our, our time to go was a couple days later. So we knew, we could see the, the cards falling, um, that we weren't going to be able to go. Uh, so we canceled our trip to Oklahoma City, uh, we were going to stay in a hotel nearby, and, and uh, my husband and some were going to have some good seafood, but uh, that, that trip was canceled. So we've got a lot of uh, different feedback here. Travel plans canceled, a loss of control and safety. That's a concern as well. And just other things going on. So we're experiencing these losses um, and in the process of, of events or celebrations being canceled, that those birthdays are, are canceled too. And so we're, we're wishing a special happy birthday to uh, those people and even anniversaries too, that you're going to have to celebrate them a little bit differently. So Jesus knows the loss that is going to happen when he is with his friends uh, in this meal together with them. He sees it coming. He's been seeing it all along, and he's referred to it uh, before he comes to Jerusalem, that he's not going to be around forever. And the, the disciples and his friends, it's, it's just not soaking in. But he sees it, and it's, it's kind of like in slow motion that things are happening. And it's just like we were seeing things happen uh, how things happened in, in China, and then things happened in Italy, and, and uh, how things started to shut down, and we knew eventually just how small our world is today, that uh, it would eventually make its way into the United States, and into Missouri, and into Springfield, and it was um, we knew it was going to happen, and eventually it did. And now we're, we're staying in our homes. And Jesus knows this. He sees this happening in his situation. And the, the first verse that Bill read earlier was, uh, he said, I'm sorry, the scripture said in the Gospel of John, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God. He knew these things, these things that were happening to him. What does he do? He gets up. He does something different. He starts doing something new, something different to underline what he's been trying to say in his three years of ministry around the area there, he makes this a special moment at this Last Supper. And he takes an old tradition, old traditions of uh, people coming into a home that they would have a servant wash their feet um, and before, because 
they're wearing sandals, their feet are dirty, and so just a way to come into a space as hospitality for your guests. And he takes that and he does something different. He makes it a new symbol, this menial task. And then he takes the idea of, of what a savior should do and turns that idea completely on its head. So in the face of loss, of his friends, of his credibility, he takes the role of a servant and does the unthinkable. I mean, we hear this from the perspective of this, this person right here. That was his or her job at the time. A slave of the household, uh, paying back a debt, and that was that person's job, to wash all the feet. I'm sure it was not the nicest job. And to wash the feet of everyone coming in. And that process was disrupted. And Jesus does the unthinkable. I mean, think of the shock of the disciples, Jesus' friends around him, that Jesus is doing it. But in the mind of this, this servant right here, you're doing something that I've been forced to do? You would do that for me? So Jesus serves. In this last meal with his friends, he serves in so many different ways. Despite of what the future holds for him, despite knowing that in less than 24 hours, these friends will be silent while he is condemned, he gives himself away. Before he is even crucified on the cross, he gives himself away. Okay. Let's put a pause on that a moment. I just want to ask, who have you been praying real hard to spend some time with your kids? Who's been doing that? Who's been praying real hard to spend some time with their spouses or to connect with others, to pick up the phone, to stop from running around and have a decent meal together? Who's been praying so hard for this? I mean, I, I probably was. I, I remember in the fall, there were times where I would spend about four hours in my car just driving kids to and from all the activities after school. So I'm sure in the size I had, in the mutterings I had, I was probably praying for this too. And I'm sure at some point you were praying for this too. God, just give me the time. Give me the time to connect with others. <sighs> and what happens? Be careful what you pray for. Because friends, now we got it. We got the time. We got the space. We got the place to do this. And we're risking the loss of our own personal time, our own personal plans, and we are surrendering. We're surrendering to the whim of something else, some faceless virus that has disrupted our usual plan for the day, and now we are faced with something different. And most of us are thinking, this is, this is not what I really planned on doing. And then I think of the scripture later on in John where Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Friends, we are having a belt strapped around us, and we are being dragged into places that we had not planned on going. It's kind of like 
resetting your computer. Have you ever had to do that when you face the, the BSOD, the blue screen of death that is on your computer because something's going wrong? And so you might have been working in the middle of a, a document, something big, a project, and then this blue screen occurs, or if you're on a different uh, platform, you might have the rainbow wheel of death. Uh, and, and things just aren't moving and working, and there's nothing else you can do but reset your computer. And so maybe this is a time of resetting. So there's this risk. You may lose all that information, that, that work that you have been um, working on with these documents that you've had, all the the programs you have pulled up with all the things going on in the background, but you must reset it in order to restore the entirety of your computer. So think about that, that this could be some sort of reset for our lives. And friends, I want to be very clear that God is not the author of this, in order for these things to happen. Life happens, and we live too closely to, to one another. We get negligent in, in um, our, our safety, and uh, viruses can form. And because our world is so small and we can travel so well, things travel, and it has ended up here. I don't think God was the author of that, but God can certainly help us through this situation now. So in this time of isolation, of becoming homebound, that God can make new things happen. And so we go back to the story here, and Jesus... Uh, I'm sorry, the, the disciples, the friends that are in this uh, situation, they're expecting the same things to happen, the procedures to happen, the, the roles of hospitality to happen. And Jesus comes in, and he's resetting their minds. And he's resetting our minds as well. And he even has this little come-to-Jesus moment with Peter. Peter says, no way, you're never going to wash my feet. And then Jesus says, no, I have to do this. I have to. I have to set an example. In the, uh, the washing of the feet and later on as he has this special meal with his friends, he's pointing out something, he's underlying something here that the disciples aren't getting and maybe we're not getting as we read the previous 12 chapters of John or the other Gospels. Do you see? Do you see what's taking place? Will you remember these things? Look, I'm taking a tradition of, of foot washing that happens all the time, and I'm putting a new reference to it. So that you call me Lord, well, this is what the Lord does. The Lord doesn't has his feet, feet washed for him. Instead, the Lord washes other people's feet. Friends, in this time of isolation, we are in close proximity to those we love and care for, and so we are called to do the same. Not necessarily exactly wash their feet, but caring for others in close quarters, that we are, are called into this place. How can we spend time with these people? These people, these special people in our lives, how can we connect? How can we see eye to eye? How can we put down our device and serve the people that we have been placed in front of, that we have been praying 
to connect with, God, just give us the time to sit down and have a meal together and not take out to go and eat it in the car ride on the way to something, that we are given the time to serve and to let others serve us. This is the time to do it. And so then, later on, when he has uh, the meal with his friends, that he points out that this is something different. That we're not just taking bread and shoving it in our mouths and eating, but that this bread has new meaning. This bread is my body that is given to you. And every time that you eat it, just like when you're normally eating throughout the day, you are nourishing your body. You are nourishing your mind. You are nourishing your soul with the food that you put into you. So he's making this an analogy that every time you eat this, every time that you connect with this, that you remember the body of Christ, you are nourished. You are nourished in your soul, deep down within. And then every time that you drink of, of every, every time that you drink, whether it be your orange juice in the morning or your coffee or your uh, milk or your iced tea, that it can remind you that you are nourished with the new covenant. The new covenant that Jesus promises us, that our, our sins are forgiven, that uh, the, life, the life of Jesus Christ is alive in us, that connects deeply within us. Every time you eat and you drink, do this in remembrance of me. Maybe that's why we say grace before a meal together. We're giving thanks that we have not only this physical nourishment within us, but also this, this spiritual nourishment for our souls. For our souls. So, he shares this meal, and he says, You may be losing me, and it breaks my heart deeply, but you will gain life. You will gain life knowing that sin and death does not have the final say. So even though there are losses happening, as we have exper experienced through Menti here, those losses don't have the final say. <sighs> Diagnoses don't have the final say. We found out yesterday that uh, a beloved member of our church community, Kayla, was diagnosed with COVID-19. And um, our church family is praying, praying big prayers for Kayla, that this diagnosis does not have the final say, that you are loved and you are cared for and you are supported by a God who genuinely and deeply loves you. And for all of those who are experiencing losses, it will not be the end. There will be life happening again. I have faith in, in the medical institution. We'll find a cure and we will flatten this curve. It will happen. It will happen. Our community, our nation, our world will heal. But we need time. So even though you are experiencing, um, you're going to experience loss in these limiting times, there is something working there, working in a different way that gives new understanding and new meaning, just like Jesus did with the foot washing, and eating a simple meal together. He, in the face of loss, he got creative and did new things 
with old traditions and made something happen. So you may be losing vacations, birthdays, retirement, school, jobs, but friends, your prayers that you have been praying for a long time, that you are gaining these deeper relationships with family and friends and loved ones through connection, so that you're given this time of, of getting close, but also getting a time of rest and also a time of inward focus. So how can you take these things that have happened in the past and done something new, done something creative, uh, done something that can make a deeper impact on your lives? Um, some people are, are getting really creative. I mean, even though uh, Kayla is, is isolated at the hospital that she is at and she can have no visitors, <laughs> she does have a phone and you can connect with her and uh, you can check in and say hi and she can uh, see her baby boy and her husband through technology. Gosh, how many years ago? 30 years ago, that wasn't even possible, yet we're able to do that now. So I pray that she is feeling connected and loved, seeing people through FaceTime, even though they cannot be there in actual person. And then with, with our worship, that we're able to do this now, and we are reaching out to more people, different people, who aren't able, who have been homebound for quite some time, and before all this happened, and are now being able to be connected, and reaching out to new people who are just floating around Facebook and, and find us online. Uh, being creative in those different ways. Um, <sighs> those uh, quilting projects or those knitting projects that uh, are half finished, you can pull them out and do something with them and bless people with that. Uh, that one person I know loves to bake but didn't find any flour or yeast and somehow there was a five pound sack of flour in the Asbury kitchen and I brought that over to her and now she's making bread for others. Getting creative in different ways. So friends, I'm wondering if you could share some, some ideas, some ways you are, uh, some things that you have done to make some good memories. <laughs> some good memories in your house. The typical things that you do, how can you make it special? So if you go to menti.com and use that code again, uh, it might actually pop, a, pop up as the next question on your phone or, or in a tab in your computer. How, how are you making the most of this time? In the face of loss, how are you turning it into something significant and meaningful? That that walk with your loved one could be a special moment. So we have cleaning my house thoroughly, writing notes to people, enjoying the outdoors together. Let me tell you, I feel like nature is, is giving this collective sigh that they are able to come out more and do more and that we can experience that through just walking around the neighborhood or going to a park. So sewing masks for mercy, yes, that's something that we can do. Uh, we'll put that uh, in our newsletter about how to, to make that happen. Being more patient, playing games and watching movies, sending cards to others, checking on my neighbors. How often do we check in on our neighbors? How often did we do that before COVID-19 came around and those restrictions came around? 
Maybe that's something we could do more of on a regular basis. Walking in the neighborhood, walking outside, making, moving, painting plans in two weeks. Oh, all right, so painting plans in two weeks. Yes, I've seen uh, people fixing up their houses. I've seen businesses. Uh, there's, there's a parking lot, and Springfield striping and uh, ceiling is probably going to get a lot of business done. Uh, taking care of those plans that you've been putting off, businesses have been putting off for a long time. They're now able to do this. <laughs> Hi, planted bulbs in the front yard and working with new passion, teaching online, and yes, break, baking bread to thank people who otherwise would not know how much I appreciate them. Ah, what a great way. Calling family and friends, working on jigsaw puzzle with the family. Gosh, how much time does it spend? How, how much face-to-face -face time you have with people that you didn't before in just working a jigsaw puzzle together? Spending more time outside with kids, getting fresh air. So this is great, watching movies. So... that we can take what is seemingly lost and diminished and taken away, pulling us into a place that we don't want to go. And Jesus turns it around and makes those ordinary times something special. Because when he did it for the disciples and, and also doing it for us, he's saying, you know, I know what's going to happen, but I love you anyway. I know I'm eventually going to face that cross and the desertion of all of you, but I'm still going to do this for you. So how, you know, even though the, the isolating place that we're in right now, how can we still serve? How can we care for others and make meaning out of things that weren't there before? And maybe even shock a few people <laughs> in the process. But it is that important. It is that important to spread God's message of love and care and of hope in new ways. Friends, Jesus sets the example of how we're supposed to live. So he serves others and makes memorable moments, facing that risk of loss and still doing it. So friends, how can we serve others and make memorable moments? Amen. So as we come into this time of prayer, there are many who are facing challenges, um, not just with COVID-19, but just life, and we, we experiencing loss in many different ways, as we saw in the beginning of the sermon. So at this time, I invite you to uh, go on, to, if you're watching Facebook Live, to put in any prayer requests there that we can lift them up together. And um, we definitely want to continue praying for Kayla as she uh, faces this diagnosis. Uh, she's, she's in stable condition at... Um, uh, the hospital up in Camden County. I can't remember the name of it offhand, but uh, prayers for her, prayers for healing and patience, and uh, B. Willingham, I just heard, is on a flight right now from Rome to New York. So prayers that, uh, continued prayers that she can get home safely, uh, she's looking to get back uh, Monday, on Monday, I believe, to the Springfield area so that all uh, the travel plans will work and that she has traveling mercies. Uh, 
we have uh, people uh, who have uh, had surgery and who are recovering uh, for Jim Burns and others uh, that they can recover well at home with the care of others. Do we have some other prayer requests there? Yes, we've asked for prayers for Jim and Pat Shane. Um, we've asked for prayers for our medical community, healthcare workers. Um, Andrea requests prayers for a safe and non-stressful move in two weeks. Um, Lake Regional Hospital, students at home, prayers for all the people in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. Yes, yes. Those, well, Patty asks for prayers for her sister, who's at a medical center in Pennsylvania, has been there for five days, and they're having problems getting information about her condition. Mm, mm, okay. So there is lots going on, lots of uncertainty. Are there any joys? Do you have any joys? Let's, let's hear some of those. There is a joy. I actually wrote, I've been wanting to ride my bike to worship ever since I moved to Springfield, gosh, about two years ago. And I, this, I actually ended up doing that this morning, and the roads are absolutely clear. So I, it was a joy that I was able to do that this morning. No joys yet, but some <laughs> additional prayer concerns. Janet asked for prayers for her grandson, Garrett, who has COVID. Um, who, who's that? Janet Bowman asked for prayers ah, for her okay. grandson, Garrett. Okay. Um, and prayers, or, or actually a joy, praise that Nathan is doing better, who had also been diagnosed with it. Okay. Renee Vestal indicates that Clark's virus numbers went up, so it's concerned there. Mm -hmm. uh, others asked for prayers for our leaders. Um, uh, Teresa's happy to be here playing and singing today. Um, Dan Scott's joy uh, is that at, like after 9-11, people are nicer. Um, mm. Prayers or joys of the birds chirping outside, green grass and signs of spring. Glenda celebrating um, her mother's 90th birthday. Mm. Okay, all right. Well, life still happens and prayer can definitely be a part of that. So as we come into prayer, uh, we'll sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. God of grace, God of mercy, we have been busy rushing around, doing our jobs, living our lives, and we have sighed this collective sigh that we have wanted to slow down, to stop, to reconnect. And then life has happened, and we are suddenly in that place as if we are reset, and we are uh, hunkered down with our loved ones, and with ourselves. So you, you have taken the, the ordinary things in our lives and given them new purpose and new meaning. Even though you're facing loss, you knew what was going to happen, you served anyway. You surrendered to what was happening and you gave new meaning to simple tasks and you taught us that the Lord of our lives also serves, also cares, and that we should do likewise. So Lord, help us. Help us to put away the distractions 
and look up and see the people that you have placed in front of us. May we take the simple activities in our lives and find new meaning in them and care for those who are around us, care for those who you have placed on our hearts that we can connect in simple ways, doing laundry together, taking a walk together, picking up a phone and calling people and checking in. Lord, all that we celebrate all the ways that you have um, inspired us to reach out, to do special things that we have shared online today. We give you thanks for that. But in this time of, of stillness, that we can lift up those who are troubled and who are experiencing loss. For those who are facing diagnosis of COVID-19, that you give them healing, healing from deep down within. And all those who are caring for them, the medical establishment, the leaders who are um, setting the precedent for how we should live in order to defeat this virus. We pray for those who are experiencing a loss in many different ways, loss of celebration, loss of jobs, loss of security. Lord, may you prevail. May you prevail in this world. May you surround us with your peace, with your hope, that we put all these prayers in your hands, that you have got this. You are ultimately the one in control, that even though there is loss, <laughs> that you somehow overcome it, that you love us so much and so dearly, that you would even go through death in order to save us, to give us life, to give us hope. <laughs> in your own incredible creative way, you surprise us and give us this hope. So Lord, we give you thanks for all the ways you love us and your steadfast love surpasses the doubt and fear that we have. We give you thanks. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and we pray the prayer that he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So now we come to a time of offering ourselves, thinking of the ways that God has given us the abilities to care for others in this past week, and the blessings that we have rece received despite the loss that seems to surround us. Uh, there are many ways to give your offering. Since we are worshiping online, you can go to asburyunitedmethodist.org slash give, and you can go through the steps there to give safely and securely online. You could also mail an offering to 1500 South Campbell Avenue, zip code 65807, or you can call the office and we can have someone come and pick up your offering. Friends, church may have left the building but church is still happening last monday uh, teachers called all their students in the springfield area to check in on them and they found out that there were needs more than just their chromebooks that they left at school 
but some needed meals and some needed things that they weren't able to go out and purchase them or there were shortages in the stores and they were not able to get them so these teachers took uh, these notes down and we contacted Portland Elementary to see how we can step up and help because people have given to our uh, special Portland fund and we can use that money to help people and we also have some individuals from the church who are able to step out and serve and so we got a list of needs from six different families and was able to purchase necessary food items and hygiene items and we were able to take the lunches from the schools and any Chromebooks that were left behind and we were able to deliver these needs to the families so that these students when they begin learning online next week that their needs have been filled, their bellies are full, they feel secure, and they're able to begin their studies again. So that we are still working and we are still doing ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. So may you give joyously and generously in Jesus' name. So now we come to our closing hymn. Blessed be the tie that binds. Bob, can you put that, that last verse up again? That hits home. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain. I don't know about you, but that, it's, it's, it's sad to see these pews empty. Um, but we shall still be joined in heart joined in heart online in new ways and hope to meet again friends this is only happening for a short period of time we will meet again we will so friends in this season we are putting a frame around a bit of life we section off a scene we look long into a face to see what we could see and to know what we can know. Just as we have done with the art and story today, zoom in your focus on the art and story of life, the life right in front of you, in your dwelling, all throughout the week. The divine artist offers us such poignant beauty each day in our own stories, in the stories around us, 
And in the heartbreak and pain and joy and awe of a simple moment turned significant. That's what happens when we put a frame around it. We zoom in for an existential close-up and search for clues for living this life with more attention and intention. May you be blessed by the sacred frames that surround the moments of your life that you dare not miss. Amen.